Megan, it's no secret that I'm a maximalist who loves luxe clothing and home goods. Mm-hmm. It's also no secret that I'm a minimalist who also loves investing in a handful of small luxe things that will last and service for a long time, especially for my home. And we both love a good deal, which is here, here. we both become obsessed with OneQuince.com, a one-stop shop for curated luxury goods shipped direct from the world's best specialist factories. Quince partners with factories that produce well-known luxury brands and that demonstrate a commitment to high production standards, fair wages, safety, and sustainability. They also focus on essential products with low design costs. Think cashmere cruise, super soft fleece pants, and the down comforters, and hotel quality sheets that I'm stocking up on for the new house. And while I stocked up on silk camis and PJs for summer, now I'm doing some back-to-school shopping for me. A new denim shirt, everyday gold hoops, and a cute crossbody bag. Staples I'm going to wear on repeat all fall, shipped directly from the factory. No middle person, no upcharge. Altogether, that's how Quince is able to keep prices up to 50 to 80% lower than other brands. Real simple, in style, fast company, Refinery29, and Fortune all agree with us. Quince is a game changer. Take advantage of a brand new offer just for our listeners. Get 10% off any purchase of $100 or more with the code FEED10. There's always free shipping and 365 day returns. Just go to onequince.com slash D-I-J-F-Y. That's O-N-E-Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash D-I-J-F-Y, short for Didn't I Just Feed You. Quality shouldn't be a luxury. Try Quince today. Summer food can be fun and food joy, but like still really easy food. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You, a podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Hey guys, before we get into today's episode, make sure to subscribe right where you're listening. And if you find yourself with an extra minute or maybe even 30 seconds, leave us a rating and review too. Those ratings help other busy parents and home cooks discover us. It's true. We had a great little review come in this week and I can't believe I haven't sent it to you over Slack or anything yet. I should do that. I saw it come in too. It was very, it makes me really happy. I know. And every there seems to sometimes like be like waxing and waning of reviews coming in. So it, it seemed like a low season. Everyone's busy. We totally understand it's the end of summer, beginning of back to school. So you don't have, you haven't had time to leave, it, leave us a rating or review. But if you discovered us this summer and you haven't yet, please go do it because it really does delight us. Speaking of end of summer, my kids go back to school this week. That's so crazy. We have a whole month. I know you do. Yeah. Do you feel like I do the pressure to like get in summer's last hurrah? I feel that pressure all the time, regardless of school <laughs> stuff, because that's how I roll. It's for better it's and for worse. very Leo energy, right? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, you know, New York, you get to the end of summer and in New York, at least there's this kind of frenetic excitement about apples. <laughs> yeah. Because we're apple country, you know, you go yes. apple picking and there's so many orchards and it's one of our big crops, I guess. So I feel like we move too quickly into that, yeah. but it's also so beautiful and perfect. You go leaf peeping and this and that. So there's something about August and the beginning of September as someone who loves summer and summer food and summer cooking, where I'm like, oh, savor every last bite, like get everything, like take it all in. So yeah, I mean, yeah. it sounds like you feel the same way. I do. And I've been thinking a lot about, you know, we've recorded several episodes about like how not to cook this summer strategy. We always talk about strategies to like make feeding your family easy, but I am missing out on some of the like food joy. Like I'm, I feel like I'm finally starting to get settled in our new house a little bit. And like, I'm enjoying cooking for my kids and myself because my husband's been away a lot. 
um, and being able to like make my bowl a little bit more exciting. And I feel like a lot of that is inspired by like all the great summer produce. And so I think today we're mostly just going to talk about like, what is, what are we trying to eat before the, before apple season, right? Like, yes, and how totally. can we make the most of what time of summer we have left. So this is not necessarily an episode for like quick week night dinners. It's an episode, although to be honest, like a lot of things on my list are not hard cooking. It's just like tracking down ingredients to make things. And then it's like kind of assembly. I think it's a food joy episode, right? Yeah, like this is about it's a pleasure cooking yes. episode. Yes. And I have to tell you also that I normally don't get to cook as much as I like to in summer because we often do a lot of traveling. Right. And this summer, you know, I look for silver linings. We ended up having to quarantine for 10 days in the middle of summer, not too long ago. (laughs) I can't wait for you to explain how that's a silver lining, but okay. (laughs) Well, because I got back to, like, I had over 10 days because it was a staggered quarantine. It was like 10 days from Oliver testing positive. And then as soon as he tested positive, we, all the rest of us got tested. But, you know, by the time you get the results and then you go again and the next day get tested and then you wait another three days for the results, (laughs) Isaac had tested positive. (laughs) So we had to wait. Everybody was fine and asymptomatic. I should just be clear about that, that nobody got sick. So thankfully... But at first it was, we have to quarantine 10 days from the first positive test result. Then it shifted and it shifted by multiple days because of the way that the timing works. So I was home a lot. And in New York City, we have Farm to Table, which delivers farmer's market produce to your door. So I was able to get everything delivered to my door and I got to do a whole bunch of summer cooking that I don't think I would have done otherwise. Okay. Good. So that's the, it was, it was really, it was fun. Like we made vanilla ice cream and we made cobbler and you know, actually Mike made vanilla ice cream. He did. Yeah. Okay. So I want to hear like what vanilla ice cream recipe he used what else you made in quarantine and then like what is still on your bucket list this summer are you ready i'm ready so we have an ice cream maker and mike i don't know what recipe it i know it was from serious eats which is perfect because serious eats is the perfect recipe resource for a guy like mike yeah one thousand (laughs) percent right so it was a serious eats recipe that didn't use egg. That was one of his criteria. He didn't want to make a custard and used whiskey. Mm. And it was really, really delicious. And he said that he read in Serious Eats, and this delighted him, these little facts, that when you don't use egg, using alcohol helps make sure that it doesn't freeze over too icy. Yes, it keeps it soft. Yes. alcohol disrupts the ice formation. Yes. So he made that and I made a cobbler using whatever fruit was about to turn. So I had blackberries, I had cherries and like one nectarine. And actually I kind of roughly followed the recipe that Jennifer Garner posted on her Instagram. You know how she has that (laughs) pretend cooking show? She had her mom on and her mom was like, yeah, put this in a bowl and you put that in a bowl and you just do it. And I was like, she's so cute. I must make this right now. It was very easy. It was good. So that was delightful. We've done a lot of corn Mm -hmm. on my bucket list. I know this is super basic. I just want to eat plain corn on the cob because for some reason, my kids are in a season of life where they're not eating corn on the cob. They act like they still have braces, but they don't. I'm like, you guys, you can eat this. (laughs) Like, it's not going to be all stuck in your teeth. So instead, I've been doing a lot of things where I'm cutting the corn off, like corn salads. I did a delicious, quick saute of corn and fryer peppers, and Mm. they love it. But I just want buttery corn on the cob. I want to do your butter bath. Yes. Will you please? I still have that on my list is to do better math. I have not done it this year yet. Also, is there something because my kids, well, Emmett, my youngest, he usually like goes 
ham on corn on the cob. But lately, both of them have been like, eh, can you cut it off the cob for me? Yeah, and I'm what's like, this about? Is this, peak, this is peak privilege in my kids. Like, <laughs> they don't eat, they want the ease of like, eating buttery corn but like not having to actually eat it off the cob themselves a hundred percent is that what i've done to them they're they're yes. that busy at this point yes. <laughs> <That's the answer. laughs> mom snap snap please cut the corn off the cob please <laughs> that is such a tough pill to swallow i hate to say it Ugh. um what about tomatoes also like have you gotten your fill of summer tomatoes because i feel like i could eat tomato toast every single day until school starts and still not have enough yeah so actually i've gotten tons of tomatoes made a bunch of salads that i'm loving i made a salad by sophia Rowe. i follow her on instagram she's brilliant and it was tomato and herbs and currants. I added cherries. And then you make this like spicy Serrano oil that isn't too spicy at all. It was fantastic. But the one thing I haven't been able to eat is tomato toast because I was in quarantine. When you, I ordered a loaf of sourdough, but the kids mm-hmm. got into it right away. Oh, and- yeah. Right. And then, you know, it goes still very quickly and I couldn't go out. So by the time you like schedule a delivery and have it come, da, 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 like I just didn't have that much bread in the house. I should have bought a couple of loaves and frozen them. I don't know why I didn't do that. But anyway, yeah. I have barely had tomato toast. So I need to get, I need to eat that more. Yeah. I feel surprised you didn't go for panzanella with your steel bread. You know what I've been making instead? I grilled it and made a pan con tomate Mm. instead. Because I also had a tomato that was about to turn and my kids were freaking out. They were like, this is so good. Make it all the time. Okay. But so walk people through, because it is kind of like tomato toast, except for you grate the tomato or kind of grate it. Can you explain it? Yeah. So you have thick pieces of toast that you can grill or put in the broiler or your toaster, whatever. And then I brush oil on it afterwards. If you're grilling, you can brush a little oil on it before, but I feel like that makes it too greasy. And then you cut a clove of garlic so that the inside of the clove is exposed and just rub it on the toast and then cut a super ripe tomato in half and then take the cut side face it right onto the toast and just rub, 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 rub. And that doesn't grate it, but it kind of breaks down the tomato, which soaks into the bread. It's delicious. Yum. I want that right now. I do think that counts as it being grated. I know we're going to get into a box grater debate here. But I love that you shared it because it also reminded me that I made risotto one night last week and we had a tomato that was just like, so squishy soft that it what I wouldn't have put it in a salad or tried to slice it for toast but I did grate it on my box grater and then add it to the risotto like right at the end as sort of like the acid for it so I'm like now, now I'm a little like well how else can I grate a tomato or use up squishy yeah. tomatoes so yeah. you know I was in Greece earlier this summer and I tagged you on Instagram yes you I was did. like the Greeks like their box graters and you actually thought it was for cheese and I was too busy like enjoying myself in Greece to, <laughs> to write back but it wasn't cheese Greeks use it all the time for grating tomato. So yeah. there's a whole bunch of dishes. Like there's a Uvetsi dish, which I posted on my site there, which is basically like a baked orzo and meat stew, stuffed vegetables. You always grate a tomato, a large part of the liquid that you use to prep the rice that gets stuffed into the vegetables comes from a grated tomato. So I think it's genius to use it for risotto, orzo, even your rice. Just like yeah. put a little tiny bit less water and grated tomato and put it in there. And that's, you know, now's the time when you're going to get the flavor. Doing that in the winter doesn't really give you much. Yeah, you might as well use canned tomatoes totally. for those kind of things. Also, you said rice. Did you say pasta or did I just think that separately? Like 
just doing grated tomato and grated garlic as a last minute pasta sauce. Yeah. With some olive like oil. A raw so pasta good. sauce. Yeah. Which everyone thinks like, oh, I have to make like have Roma tomatoes and make like a really cooked pasta sauce. But like in August and beginning of September, this is the time to just like grate the tomatoes or finely chop them and toss them in at the end. So yeah. Good. And if you just let them sit in a little bit, like macerate in a bit of olive oil and a combination. I like sherry vinegar and uh, cider vinegar, just a little bit, get a combo, a depth of flavor and garlic and just let the tomatoes macerate and then toss that with pasta. That's delicious too. And you don't have to cook the sauce at all. Yes. I do that with red onions always like let them macerate before I throw them in a salad. It's yeah. not the same as like a pickled red onion, but it helps take the bite out of them. Yes, for some totally. Salads. Yes. So speaking of tomatoes on my bucket list that I haven't eaten yet is gazpacho. Mine too. I love making gazpacho and I love gazpacho in general. Do you have a favorite recipe? Because I'm looking for one. So. I do. There's one in the New York Times that I really like. They call it Best Gazpacho by Julia Moskin. And it actually is really, really good. <laughs> I remember <laughs> making it after I came home from a trip from Spain. And I was really into gazpacho. And so were my kids because they would eat it at lunch. We were in Spain in July and August and it was super hot. It was the perfect lunch and the kids were really into it. And it really is delicious. I, I haven't really looked around for another one. I make it every year. Now, do, is it a blender gazpacho? Do you have to make, do you make a little like chopped salad to go on it? I want deets because I want to know if it's living up to my expectations of best gazpacho. Well, what makes the best gazpacho for you? <laughs> so there's so many. Is it red? Is it white? Is it chunky? Is it not? This one is not chunky and yeah. I can go both ways, but I love a not chunky. I love something that's silky and creamy without using any dairy, which is what you get from this. And I love a gazpacho that I can finish with a really good, delicious olive oil so that you get that nice, like, you know, little bite that you get from fresh, delicious, extra virgin olive oil on top. I don't, I, all of a sudden when you were like, well, what makes the best gazpacho had weird PTSD flashbacks of working on a, an episode of Good Eats about gazpacho, well, about tomatoes and how there was one of the recipes where we like took the tomato pulp and strained it. I think it was for Bloody Marys and it really did make the best Bloody Mary from fresh tomatoes. But I think all of that like work made me be like, uh, I think for me, I guess the best gazpacho is one that's like a Venn diagram of ease and deliciousness. So not a fussy recipe, preferably like throwing everything in the blender or the food processor. And then just maybe making like a small little salad salsa situation again with a really good olive oil to put on top because I do want some texture, but I don't want to put in a ton of effort for texture either. I hear you. I agree. Should we move on from gazpacho? We I'm should move on. I'm going to say. Okay. So, okay. okay. Do you feel like we covered tomatoes? Because I, I have more to say on a different topic that I don't want to slip away from us. I don't think so. We talked about panzanella. That's on my list. High on my list. Because I can't believe I haven't made it yet. Oh, no, what about a tomato tart? What about like that cheddar tomato tart? I actually made that. I posted it on Instagram because it was one of the days, I think it was like the first day that we found out we were in quarantine and I had all these plans that I ended up having to cancel. So yeah. I didn't have a lot of groceries, but I pulled out puff pastry. I had a tomato. I had one ear of corn and I made a version of your tomato tart that you shared with Didn't I Just Feed You. Have you made one of those yet? I haven't. And it's so funny when you were like, oh, what other tomato things? I was like, well, I haven't made a tomato pie yet this summer, which is like a very yes. Southern thing. But I feel like I have to reveal at this point that I am the only person in my family who really likes tomatoes. Oh. <laughs> We've been talking so about them for like a hundred hours. <laughs> I know. I know. So it becomes this thing of like, I was saying sort of at the top of the episode about how I'm cooking a lot for like just me and my kids. So I'm always trying to find things where it's like I can finish it in a way where I get all the flavors that I want and they can have whatever it is more plainly. And I find myself not making things 
like tomato pies or tomato tarts where I have to be the only one to eat it. Like a yeah. tomato tart, you kind of want to eat it the day you make it. Otherwise, yes. it gets soggy. Totally. And there's just me to eat. Yeah. So I would be investing in a whole tomato tart for myself, which sounds good, but also like I would make give myself a stomach ache. I hear you. <laughs> I will say just quick note on the tomato tart. I used puff pastry instead of like a homemade dough. Yeah. I used boursin as the base. I just softened it with a little bit of cream and the kids loved it. They were like, what is this creamy, delicious base? <laughs> like, yes. oh, boursin. They're like, mm. it was great. And then I topped it with cheddar cheese, which I wasn't sure would go great. And it did. It just gave like a nice little sharpness on the top. Uh, yes. So anyone who's interested in a similar recipe can visit our Instagram. Maybe we'll share it to stories when this episode goes live. It's super adaptable, like Stacy said, to other cheeses, um, whatever kind of tomatoes you have on hand, and does use frozen puff pastry. So we're hitting that like summer food is can be fun and food joy, but like still really easy food. Yes, totally. Yes. Okay. Now I'm officially moving us on from tomatoes. Summer seafood, we did an entire episode on it. And I have to say on my bucket list is the sheet pan seafood boil that we shared. Dude, that you won't regret it. So delicious. You know, I'm missing going to visit my sister in New Orleans. We always do some big seafood extravaganza when we go. So that's going to be the answer. Do you have any summer seafood bucket list? I mean, I still have not gotten my gosh darn lobster roll. Girl! I've been talking about all summer. I was planning to make them for us while you were here. Remember, we were going to do it side oh. by side. Please oh. please let me just cancel your trip because of your COVID exposure, which is fine. It's totally fine. But again, it's like, this could be a whole mini episode. I feel like it could. Like when you, your partner isn't here and you know that you're only going to be, you're going to be the one person to like eat the thing that you make. It's harder to be like, yes, I'm going to go and buy all the ingredients for lobster rolls. Yeah, just totally. For me. Totally. I get it. Yeah. I feel like I wish I could ship you a lobster roll. <laughs> I'm going to figure like it out. I probably you can. I probably like can. As soon as I said it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We can do this. We'll figure it out. I will before the end of summer. I promise. Even if you have to assign me an Instagram reel. <laughs> <laughs> to make it happen. Okay. Yes. Yes. I want to go quickly through any other foods. And then I also want to talk about drinks and desserts because I have yes. things to say. So what other foods are on your summer bucket list that you need to eat before summer's out? Okay. I feel like actually both all of mine are drinks and desserts. <laughs> oh, great. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So that's probably very revealing, right? Like it is easy for me to make drinks and like keep those on hand for myself. So I'm very into that. And we have been like, we could, I feel like honestly, we could eat a watermelon every day. Like I think I forgot how good like peaches and melons and stuff are in the South. Like the heat, I don't know, something that like even like the most basic grocery store watermelon that we've had this summer has been so sweet, so juicy, so delicious. And so I have been doing a lot of like when we get to like sort of the end of the watermelon, just pureeing it and drinking like the watermelon water with yep. tequila and lime. Nice. And I want to continue to drink that. But one of my former colleagues at Kitchen, Nicole Rufus, she just shared this like hibiscus pitcher cocktail, which we'll link to. And I really want to make that even just like hibiscus tea is so good. So flavorful. It's sort of like sweet and sour and so pretty. So I might even just make the base and share that with the kids, like without the alcohol and then add alcohol when I need a cocktail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, related to that, I was talking about how I'm missing visiting my sister in New Orleans. I've been craving sweet tea, which yes. I know is all year round down south. But for me, I very much associate it with summer. And, you know, that seafood boil, I want to make a big pitcher of sweet tea to go with it. You should. Mm. It's really, it is really weirdly one of those things that I miss where you can get like good sweet tea at every single restaurant drive through. We don't drink it a ton at home, but it is fun when we go out. So delicious. Yes. And another drink that I've been craving, years ago, I made a currant syrup and was making margaritas with them. And I just recently found 
an image that I took. The, the image itself is so mouthwatering. I was like, oh yeah, that's what I need to do. And I actually have red currants left over from making that Sophia Rowe salad. Mm. And I was thinking I should just make a simple syrup with them. And it makes a great soda mixed with LaCroix for the kids or just plain soda water. And it makes a delicious margarita. I love that. Also, you recently shared on our private Instagram for our supporting community spritz. And I was like, ooh, I have not had enough summer spritzes this summer yet. Yeah. Over quarantine, I said to Mike, I was like, what is up with your wine deliveries? Stop giving me red wine. I need some sparkling (laughs) and I need some nice, crisp, fresh white wine. And so he was like, okay, bet. Like he loves doing research. Yeah. <laughs> and like three different bottles of sparkling white came. <laughs> it's delicious. And so you're making spritzes with that? It was, yeah, think- and yes. Aperol and then a little splash of soda water. Yeah. Do you think you could use that currant syrup to make Absolutely. spritzes? I don't know why I went there because I was thinking, ooh, like the Koki Americano, which is their like white aperitif wine. Yum. Yes. Would be so good with that. Yum. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Okay. Are those all the drinks we're drinking this summer? I think so. I want to talk more about ice cream. Okay. Because you mentioned Mike made vanilla ice cream. And right when we moved into our house, I was like, oh, I'm going to put my ice cream bake base my the base for my ice cream maker right in the freezer so that we can make ice cream this summer and we still have not but the ice cream recipe that I saved to make is from Emily McDowell you know she wrote the book on pie yes and it is actually one of those like no churn recipes for a s'mores ice cream where you like make whipped cream and then you fold in fluff, which you've been on. You've mentioned oh, fluff, I feel yeah. like in like six episodes lately. That's an exaggeration, but you have brought it up. And then you add sweetened condensed milk and like some chocolate and graham cracker crumbs and you freeze it and add more like marshmallows and graham cracker crumbs and stuff. But I really want to make that and I haven't gotten to it yet. In fact, I keep having the ingredients on hand, like on purpose. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this. And then the heavy cream gets used up for something else or the graham crackers get eaten or the fluff gets yes, eaten. And totally. so I feel like every week I'm like ordering one of the groceries for it and then still not getting to it. So I have to do that before school starts for sure. So I was inspired also in our supporting members group. We published two exclusive bonus episodes every single month. And we just published one on crisps, crumbles, cobblers, etc. All those delicious fruit desserts, pandawi. <laughs> like we <laughs> just be, basically, yes, boy, yes. we just basically talked about the difference between them and which we like, which we don't like. And I love that episode so much. And I want to make everything from it. I mentioned making a cobbler up top. Mm-hmm. I really, really want to make more, <laughs> more yes. of all of the above. I want to make a crisp, which I haven't done yet. I really want to make a blueberry pie. Okay. Any particular recipe of blueberry pie? What's no. your like idealized blueberry pie? No, but I don't want one of those raw fruit pies, which yeah. I know are delicious and great, but like I want a classic blueberry pie. Do you have a recipe for me actually? I, I weirdly do not. Oh, oh maybe a good eats episode. I'll do I, it. Yeah, I'll look it up. I think I remember it being kind of fussy, but I think the blueberry filling is actually like cooked. Yes. Because then we froze, we like made it for, we froze it for future use. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm into yeah. That. That's fun. Okay. We'll link to that, epi- that recipe. And then that's the one you have to make now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But same as you, like the idea of crumbles and slumps and all that stuff. Chadwick Boyd, who's like a a food editor based in Atlanta and New York, he shared at the beginning of summer and he was using cherries, this like brown butter biscuit bake. Because he's also like, he went on biscuit tour with Carla Hall. Yeah, he's he's another biscuit biscuit expert. Basically, like it's a sheet pan of the fruit and then you make like a biscuit batter, but instead of folding it, you add a little bit more liquid to it and you brown the butter for it and you pour it over the top of fruit, the fruit. So it bakes up like really fluffy and crispy on the top. And then underneath is like the sugary, juicy, syrupy fruit. And I feel like that 
with homemade vanilla ice cream is everything I want to eat this next week. Yum. And I will make a whole one of that, like a whole pan of it, even if my kids will not eat it with me. So related <laughs> to that, did you get to eat strawberry shortcake when strawberries were at their peak? Because I, I did like not. Yes. I did not. And I'm very sad about it. Okay. But so you I don't did know. kind of remember at the beginning of summer, you may, you had like your first dinner party and we like texted back and forth. I was like, oh, you should make this strawberry shortcake. But you ended up making a different strawberry cake, more like angel food cake than shortcake. Yes. It was an angel food cake for a barbecue. But you don't feel like that counts. No, I want like a strawberry <laughs> shortcake. Like, you know what I mean? Like a yes. split biscuit, strawberries inside. But I think I can do it with blackberries. I love blackberries. Ooh. I think blackberries are underrated. I think blackberries are too seedy. Oh, I love them so much. So I might do it with blackberries to make up for it. Okay. Can you still get decent strawberries too? Like, would you do like a Harry's Berries order? You know, they're so expensive when you I ship know. them to New York and they're, they're the season passed. But I'm also speaking to the woman who spent $40 on a single pink pineapple. I know, but you know, you do remember that was a mistake. I'm over the top, but I'm not that over the top on purpose. That was, I thought I was getting a case of them. I know. Well, we're, we're, here we are. We're talking about Food Joy. This is not the episode where we're That was about not budget. Food Joy. When I, pay, when I opened it the box fun. and there was one, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> That's not, that was not Food Joy. It was Food Joy to eat it. But that was not joy I felt when I saw it one really- small pineapple too. It wasn't <laughs> It was tiny. It's making me laugh. Is that not some? Sort yes, of food there you joy? go. Yes. I'm glad okay. I could provide you with some joy. Extended <laughs> food joy. Oh my goodness. All right. So, anything else? What do people need to make? Like, is there anything you have eaten that you feel like everybody else needs to have on their bucket list? I feel like it's stuff I've talked about, and I'm worried I'm going to like annoy people and be like, "You have to make the Adolehi corn polenta. It's so good." I That's- haven't made it. Great, I'm adding it to the list. Great. You have to make a panzanella. I think I have a great recipe on kitchen, although I kind of like wing it, but it's a good. Um, format. It's like very tomato heavy. And yeah, butter bath corn, which I know I haven't made this summer, but I promise you that it's so good. Like just you have to do it. And then use the leftover butter bath to make like biscuits or cornbread or something. Like don't let it go to waste because it's super flavorful too. Beautiful. What about you? Seafood. Are you going to tell us to eat seafood? Just I am like lobster rolls, fried clams for sure. A delicious Greek salad. Obviously, I'm in Greek cooking mode, just having come back from Greece. I mean, those beautiful tomatoes right now, just so simple. Cucumbers, red onion, good olive oil, a little red wine vinegar, a squirt of lemon. It's perfect. Pan con tomate, I have to say. We were all pretty like excited about that. Just really, like, really dig into the tomatoes and find a way that works for you. I think it's interesting that you were saying that your family doesn't really love tomatoes, so you're finding ways to enjoy them. That's, Mostly tomato toast. Yeah. Because um, it's like single serve and I can use up one really nice right. tomato for myself. So even if you're just buying one great tomato, not just from the supermarket, unless you have a nice fancy supermarket that has like local heirlooms, like find yeah. a great tomato and treat yourself. Yes. Also BLTs. I haven't eaten a BLT yet this summer. What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I want to hear from everyone else what's on their summer bucket list. I'm also excited to hear what is on everyone else's summer food bucket list. So please join our community. Visit didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. We offer a free listeners group and also a supporting membership that comes with crazy perks, including those two exclusive mini episodes every month that I mentioned, live events, lifetime access to a private Instagram feed, the one that Megan mentioned where we show our real, real life and more. Hey, and speaking of Instagram, you can also find us there as at didn't I just feed you and you can subscribe to our newsletter from there or from our site. We send out a recipe and our pick of the week, like something fun we find every single week. So you don't want to miss out on the newsletter. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to didn't I just feed you wherever you get 
get your podcast so that you don't miss a single episode. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik, especially today. I'm Stacy, And I'm Megan. Stay sane and well fed until next week. Great. It's so great. I mean, thank God we have each other and we don't care.